Well, we're kicking off this week with a lot of heat and dryness across parts of the plains, maybe even some dust out there as well in the northern tier. What do things look like as we go throughout the week, though, and get into next week? Will we see any rain chances, maybe even snow? I don't want to think about that, but we're going to talk about it. Joining us now, Eric Stodgrass with Nutrient Ag Solutions for our weekly weather update. Eric, good to talk with you again. And let's start with just the, the general outlook to start off this week, as I know things are very warm in uh, many parts of the plains and into the Midwest here to start. Yeah. Warm and windy. I mean, these are the kind of days where you have evaporation rates that could be half inch to maybe three quarters of an inch in the northern plains in May. Uh, we're looking at temperatures maybe as far north as Minot hitting 100 degrees Fahrenheit again. I mean, they got really hot yesterday. They're really hot today. But we got red flag warnings that stretch from parts of um, Nebraska all the way to Minnesota and everything in between. And so it's going to be a pretty rough day. But, you know, as you kind of alluded to, there's a massive shift happening. I have a frost risk in North Dakota by the end of the week, in the weekend. And uh, the temperature change that's going to be coming behind this is going to be significant. Now, they're going to get some moisture out of it. There's going to be some rain in between, but super hot, dry, windy, then very cold. Uh, and you're right. Over the weekend, we watched this chance for snow build into one of our models. It's the GFS. That's the flagship model for the United States. And if you would have looked at it yesterday afternoon, on Sunday afternoon, I shouldn't have been looking at the weather. It's Mother's Day, but I did it anyway. <laughs> And uh, I, I, one of the model runs, I'm not joking you, from Wyoming all the way through southern Manitoba, put down a swath of, uh, gosh, 10 to 18 inches of snow. Oof. Now, it's the GFS. We talked last week that the GFS skill has been dropping, and it dropped again. So we're skeptical of it, but it's something that we just can't ignore. But there will be cold air in place. They're going to really see the temperatures drop off quickly. So if you are in the North North Dakota, it is not impossible for you to see a 70 degree swing in temperatures in the next seven days. So there we go. Wow. Well, and, and thinking about that, we, you know, you can never rule out a late spring snowstorm. So again, the chance is there. We'll track it as it gets closer. But just thinking about how dry it is in many parts of the plains, you know, I moved down, say, to Nebraska, which has really been under the gun for dryness here as of late. And I mean, just looking at the, the weather models and the forecasts, I mean, that's you know one area in particular out of many in the plains and in the western corn belt that could use a, a shot of precipitation, Eric. They could. And there's there's an unfortunate saying that I still have spent a tremendous amount of time trying to learn, and it's drought begets drought, right? So do I see rain coming in the forecast for Nebraska? I do out of the next two systems. It's it's trying to rain. Uh, they don't just need an inch, though. They need like an inch a week for the next month. Uh, because they got all the pivots turning. They've got problems where parts of Nebraska are at like 20% of average on precipitation. I mean, 20%. It's bone dry there. And that extends to parts of western Iowa. There's a section of Minnesota that's dry. Northern Illinois is dry. Whereas southern Illinois, I mean, I was just texting with a colleague of mine down in southern Illinois. He's normally completely done planting right now. He did the first planting yesterday on Mother's Day, which I know is a cardinal sin. You should not break, but they didn't have an option. It was an open window because it's already raining there again today. So even across my home state of Illinois, the flip-flop from north to south is huge on the precipitation. And there's some subsurface soil moisture issues that we, we have to watch. And I'm just going to say this about Nebraska. They are extremely dry. And I, you cannot deny how, how, how rough it is in that area right now. And there's a lot of folks there that are just wondering, is that the epicenter for where the drought is going to be this upcoming summer? And that's a good question to ask. If you go out and look at the new sub-seasonal weather forecast models, like the one from the European, which runs out all the way to the June solstice, mm -hmm. it's still got the whole area very, very dry. And unfortunately, that seems to be a common theme between the sub-seasonal and the seasonal models attempting to keep that region uh, drier going into summer. So this is this Western Corn Belt risk that we've got right now. Meanwhile, pockets of the Mid-South, Pockets of the Southern Plains, pockets of the Ohio River Valley are like, just shut this off. And they completely stop planting a peanuts, cotton, everything down in the southeastern United States as a big upper level low sits and spins there. So, you know, kind of bringing this all to a head here. Right now in southern Georgia, the temperatures are expected to be 30 degrees colder than Minot, North Dakota today. That is how flip the whole pattern is. And we've got to see if things change around to get us a good stormy summer to help ensure that these crops do well. 
Well, and I, I think about this too. I, someone sent this to me and I thought it was a poignant comment. You know, when you look at the weather and the markets and how they treat uh, the weather, it seems like here a lot of times these markets prefer to uh, immediately assume that we're going to have a 2012 type of drought. Whereas, you know, we should be thinking about the markets, you know, normal state until there is a drought concern. But yeah. it's, it's just an interesting thing to think about across the board is that we always seem to go back to the recent history and worry ourselves that we're going to have a 2012 all over again until we don't. But I know that's something you and I have talked about for weeks is that the potential, at least this time around, has been really showing up with the models for much of the Western Corn Belt. It has, but you, you make a good point, right? So if you think about grand scheme, entire Corn Belt, since 1980, we've had 80, 83, 88, and 12. Those are like your big, we're off by 25% on yield, right? So four times in 45 years. So I understand the thought process to go back and worry about that. I, I do. I do every day. I, I always worry about the extreme events. But the reality is, is that I think this is a summer of precipitation disparity not one of complete lacking or abundance. In other words, it's going to be regionally, there's going to be problems. And can you knock the yields off, you know, 510 bushel with that? I don't think you can. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, this is something where I'm just going to go off what my friend and colleague, Matt uh, Bennett said. Matt's like, we talk to our customers right now about being flexible and, and flexibility is going to be key because you might have a run-up story in June or early July based on weather scare that puts a sharp premium in the market just off of storyline. And it could either explode up or explode down. But if, you, if you're if you not positioned well, you're caught on the wrong side of it. So I think it's going to be a tricky year that weather premium is going to be built into the market at times. It is every year, but I think this year is a little bit more heightened. And uh, I think we just need to be aware that that risk still sits on the table, even though it is just May 12th. Any other final thoughts for us real quick, Eric? Yeah, just keep an eye on the ocean temperatures off the West Coast. It's quite cold off the Baja. That's a signal for Western Corn Belt drought. And just so you know, it's pretty chilly around the Black Sea right now. They're having days where the highs are in the 50s. The soil temps are still in the upper 40s. And it's been kind of wet as of late, meaning that their crop's not jumping out of the ground like some parts of the United States are. So just something to think about. Well, I know folks can go to agweather.com for more, ag-wx.com. Eric Snodgrass, Nutrient Ag Solutions, always good to hear from you. Thanks for joining us for our weekly weather update. We'll talk to you next week. All right, see you, Jesse.